Okay, so the first question we'll take a look at is how to graph a log function. Uh, so remember the general idea of a log function is you've got a vertical asymptote and it either is going to curve one or two, one of two ways. So which way does a log function normally curve if you don't do any transformations to it? To the right. Yeah, so normally it's going to go to the right. The only transformation that would make it curve left is if you reflect it, and we're not going to do that here. All right, so first thing we want to find is the vertical asymptote. Uh, do you remember what you set the argument equal to to solve for the vertical asymptote? Zero. Yep. So take the vertical asymptote, set it equal to zero, and what are we going to get for the vertical asymptote? Negative one half. Yep. Negative a half. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to sketch, just so it gives me an idea of the boundary, like where it where it doesn't go past. Uh, all right, so let's get... okay, so that's going to be a vertical line at negative one half. Okay, so let's put that in about there. And that's good. So vertical line at negative a half, and which way did you say that it's going to curve? To the, to the right. Yeah, to the right. So we need, I would say, maybe three or four more points just so we can get an idea of the um, of the curve. So let's type that in. So I'll put in log two x plus one, and I'm not going to worry about the window because I'm not using the calculator to graph it. I'm just using it for the table. Okay. Make sure your table is on ask so we can type in what we want. And what would be, um, let's say, four values that we could pick that are to the right of the vertical asymptote? One. Okay, so yeah, one. Zero. Um, maybe like five. Maybe five, yeah. Do you want higher than that? Yeah, we'll do one more. Ten? Yeah. I, I wouldn't go past ten just because my graph paper doesn't. Um, okay. So let's graph that and see what we've got. So we've got zero, zero. So it goes right through the origin. One, just below a half. Uh, five, we're at one. One, two, three, four, five, one. And ten, we're at 1.3. So it's not going up very quickly. Now, if we hit graph, um, let's just see what it does look like. Is that a good sketch? Um, yeah. Um, so remember, the calculator has trouble with log functions. Yeah. So it, it can't really do a good job sketching it. There's really something that's missing there. The going down. Right. It's supposed to, it's supposed to look more like so it's supposed to come over, curve, and then basically drop straight down, getting closer and closer to that dotted line. Um, but it can't do that because it gets too steep. Okay. And that's the idea of graphing a log function. Any question on that one? No. Okay. Alright, so next one we're going to look at um, is listing the transformations uh, in a log function. At most, we usually could have up to six, two shifts, two stretches, two reflections. Um, this one's got quite a few, but not, not six. Um, how many does it have? Uh, five. Yep, it's got five. So remember the, the order. Um, we have to always do horizontal. I can put that off over here. Order for transformations is the horizontal shift, then the horizontal stretch then horizontal reflections. And these are all if you have them. You might be missing some. So we do the horizontal first, and then we do all the vertical last. So then we would do the vertical stretch, then the vertical reflection, and then the vertical shift. That's the order that we always follow. Okay. All right, so let's go back to this one. Uh, so let's start with horizontal shift. Do we have a horizontal shift? Yes. Yeah. Um, what 
is the amount in the direction? Left four. Uh, yep, yeah, it's going to shift left four. Okay, second one. Um, do we have a horizontal stretch or compression? Um, a compression? Uh, yes, we do have a compression, and what number is telling you that? Two. The two. Yeah. The bigger you make that number in front of the X, the more that it compresses. So I think horizontal compression by factor of two. All right, factor of two. Do we have a horizontal reflection? No. No. We'd have to have a negative in front of the two for that. So the next thing we'll go to is vertical stretch. Well, if we have five transformations, we have to have everything that's left. Um, so what is the vertical stretch? The three. The three. And how would you like it? Uh, a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Yeah. Vertical stretch by a factor of three. All right. Well, vertical reflection, do we have that? Yes. Yeah. What? What's causing that to happen? The negative in front of the three. Yeah. So we have a vertical reflection. If it didn't say vertical reflection, you could also say reflect over the x x axis. Axis. Yep. You could reflect over the x axis. And the fifth one. Um, what is our vertical shift? It's uh, down five. Down five. So shift down. Five. And that's pretty much what you'd have to do um, for describing the transformations. Okay. Any question on that? No. All right. Okay, so next what we're going to look at is evaluating a logarithm, um, but the base is not one of the ones the calculator can do. Um, what are the two bases that the calculator can do just by pressing a button? Well, it can do base 10 and yep. then the natural log. Yep, and the natural log is base e. e. So this isn't a 10 or an E, so we're going to have to rewrite this so we can type it in. Do you remember how we... We rewrite it. You would put the log 4.5 on top, and then in the denominator, you would write log 3. Yep. And what base are you using on that log? 10. 10, which is something we can type in. All right. Can you tell me, um, when I type it in, you tell me what to press? Um, parentheses? Mm, not yet. Okay. Log Yep. 4.5. Now I do parentheses. Yeah. Divide by log three. Yeah. And that parentheses that closes the four point five that was important because if you don't put it, uh, you get a different answer, okay. and then it's wrong. All right. So now let's say it's set to round to four decimal places. Um, what would that be if we round to four decimal places? One point. Sorry. <laughs> 1.3691. Yep. So that's how you use the change of base formula to evaluate a log. Any uh, question on that? No. All right. All right. So the next one um, is going to be dealing with arc length. And what's the formula that we use? S equals R theta. So S equals R theta. And let's just label what each of those are. Um, what's the S? The R thing. So R thing. And the R? Radius. Radius. And theta. It's the angle. Angle. Anything else you want to tell me about the angle? It has to be in radians. It has to be in radians. Yeah. So there's really three different kinds of questions they could ask. You're either going to solve for the S, the R, or the theta, uh, depending on what they give you. So they'll always give you two out of three, and you'll have to solve for the third one. Um, do you have any one in particular you want to solve for? Um, no. No? All right. Then let's, um, let's solve for R. Okay. So let's find R. So I'm going to tell you that the arc length is, I don't know, let's do 10 pi feet, and the angle is 45 degrees. So you have everything you need. 
what would be your first step? You have to convert the degrees to radians. Yeah, we're going to convert the degrees to radians. Okay, so yeah, first thing we need to do here is convert degrees to radians, because this formula has to use an angle that's in radians. Right. Um, do you remember what 45 degrees is if we change it to radians? Yep. Pi divided by 4. Pi divided by 4. If you didn't remember that, uh, what could you multiply by to convert it? Um, pi over 180. Yes, pi over 180. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to plug that in for s. I'm going to plug that in for theta. Okay, so my equation is going to be 10 pi equals, and then I got my radius times my angle. Now we can get rid of the pi and the 4 at the same time and put them both on the other side. Um, how do we get rid of both at the same time? Flip it and multiply. Yep. So 4 over pi and times 4 over pi. So pi's are gone, 4's are gone, and what else is gone? The pi's. Yep, pi's are gone there. And that gives me a radius of what? 40. Eight. Eight. So when you're solving, if you're solving for s, that's a length. r is a length, but theta is an angle. Yeah. And it'd be the same idea if they gave you two different letters. You always just plug them in and solve for the third one. Any question on the um, arc length formula? No. Okay. Nope, nope, we're good. All right. Okay, so next two we're going to focus on changing between radians and degrees. Um, so let's start with the 18. That's, that's a degree symbol. All right. So if we want to change that to radians, um, what would we multiply by? Maybe over pi. Multiply by 180 over pi. Pi over 180, sorry. Yeah. So pi, because remember, think of 180, that's the number with that's the degree symbol, cancel. and you want that to cancel out. Okay. Now, if they don't say it around it, we want to leave it as an exact answer. So let's reduce it um, as much as we can. What are, what's 18 and 180 both divisible by? 18. Yeah, by 18. 18 goes into itself once, and 18 goes into 180? 10 times. 10 times. Okay. So what's your final answer? Pi over 10. Pi over 10. Yep. Now, if they did want a decimal, uh, how would you type that in to get a decimal? Press the pi button. Press the pi button. Don't press 3.14. Yeah. So pi button, divide by 10, we get 0.314. Okay. Any question on changing uh, degrees to radians? No. Okay, now radians to degrees. Okay, so 7 pi over 12. What would we multiply by to change that? Now you multiply by 180 over pi. That's the 180 over pi. 180 degrees. Pi has the word radians after it, but just pretend you know it's, it's invisible. So radians is gone. Pi is gone. And what... What goes into the biggest number that goes into 12 and 180? Or if not the biggest number, any number. And we can work our way through it. It's just six. six. All right, we could do six. Um, so six goes into 12 how many times? Two. Two. And how many times does, let's just say six into 18? It's 30. Yeah, so three and then put the zero. So we get 30. And we can reduce a little bit more. So one in 15. One in 15. So we're left with 7 times 15. So that's going to give me... Oh, what's the 105. 105, yep. Now, I didn't put any label on pi over 10, did I? Should I put something? No. No. When it's radians, you don't need a label, but when it's degrees, you do. So any question on converting between uh, degrees and radians? No. Okay. All right, so next question uh, has to do with finding complements and supplements. Um, so complement means, or complementary means we have two angles that add up to what? 90 degrees. 90. So in order to find the complement of 40, what's, what's the calculation you would do? 
you take 98 and subtract 40. Yep. And that gives you a complement of 50 degrees. 50 degrees. Yep. And I guess technically I should put my degrees in those. Okay, so there's the comp. Now, supplement, um, we're looking for two angles that add up to 180. 180 in degrees. Or what about in radians? Pi. Pi. So whatever unit they give you to start the problem off, that's the unit they want for the final answer. Okay, but I can I can remind you that on the test as well. Okay, so what's going to be your calculation to find the supplement of seven pi over twelve? Pi minus seven pi over twelve. Yep. Now we can think of pi as a fraction by putting it over one. Yeah. And now to subtract them, what do we need to have? Common denominator. Common denominator. What's the common denominator between one and twelve? 12. 12. So you could just multiply the top and bottom by 12. 12. So really just go like that. 12 pi over 12, take away 7 pi over 12. Okay. And what does that give me? 5 pi over 12. Yep. 5 pi over 12. And that's your sum. Okay. All right. Any question on finding the complement or supplement in radians or degrees? You can have a radian one in com that's complementary too. I just did a degree one. But any question on those? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So the next one, I'm uh, just making sure we know different de definitions depending on the size of the angle. Um, so the first one here, it's got the symbol in it, so that tells us it's what kind of angle. A right angle. Yeah. So that's a right angle. And then this one, definitely bigger than 90. We don't know how big, but that's fine. Uh, what kind of angle is that? No, obtuse angle. Obtuse. And then smaller than 90 acute. is a Q. Has to be smaller than 90, but it still has to be more than what? Smaller than 90 degrees. Yeah, but more than? Zero. Zero. Yeah, it can't be like negative 10. That's not a Q. Yeah. Even though it's smaller than that. Because that's considered obtuse because it's like all the way around. Uh, it doesn't really fall in any category. No. No, they don't classify negative angles as anything. They just don't, at least with these definitions. Yeah, they just don't fit in. Uh, and what about this angle? Linear? Uh, well, if you had two angles like this, and we call these angles one and two, we could say they do form a linear pair. Uh, but what do you call it when it's when it's 180? When it's 180 degrees. Do you remember what kind of angle that is? Straight angle. Okay. It's a straight angle. How about this one? Exterior? Yeah, the exterior. Do you know what that's called? Bigger bigger than 180, but less than 360. No. It's called a reflex angle. Not sure if we mentioned that one or not. We definitely did the right obtuse in the Q. I thought we did straight, maybe not. Um, I know we didn't do reflex. But any question on those those terms? No. Okay. All right. So last question um, for the review is the unit circle trick. Uh, there's really two ways they could give you a question on that. They either start you with a coordinate, or they start you with an angle. To do unit circle trig, you need to make sure that you have what? The location. The location. You need the coordinate. Okay, you gotta know the x and the y. So the first problem, they're giving us the x and the y value. And all we have to do is fill them in to all six. Now on the test, I'm not gonna ask for all six of the same problem. I might just say, here's a coordinate, tell me the C here. That's it. Okay, well, let's we'll do all six. Okay, let's start with the sign. Um, so I'm looking for, there's some angle, which we don't know, that, but it's represented by that coordinate, and I want to know the sign. What would the sign be? One half. Yep, yeah, it's the y value. And the cosine of it? Negative, or square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and what about the tangent? One half over... The square root of 3 over 2. Yeah, so I need a little space to do that one out. So it's the y over the x. 
And when we do that, we have twos in each denominator. So what happens to the twos? They cancel out. They cancel out, because if you flip and multiply, these are just going to be gone. So now you're essentially left with 1 over the square root of 3. So we have 1 over square root of 3. But we need to fix that so the square root's not in the bottom. Yeah. So when you fix it, what would you end up with? The square root of 3 over 3. Yep. Yeah. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. And we get square root 3 over 3. Now, keep that other answer, because that might come in handy in a second. Um, all right. Let's do what's the cosecant. It's just the reciprocal of, of um, cosine, so it would just be 2 over 1. The cosecant is the reciprocal of which one? The sine, si right? The sine, yeah. yeah. Oh, did it yeah. say cosine? I think so. Okay. Yeah. So, if, but what you said was right. It's flipping the 1 over 2, and it becomes 2 over 1. Two over one. Yeah, we can just put two. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's our first step to getting the secant? Putting the two over the square root of three. Yep. Yeah. So you're going to take the root three over two. We're going to flip it. So it becomes two over the square root of three. But we have the same problem that we just had over here. Um, we need to fix it so the root's not in the bottom. You just do the same thing. Multiply it. Yep. Yeah. And what would you get when you do that? You get uh, 2 times square root of 3 over 3. Yep, 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now, for the cotangent, you could flip either what I just circled in red, or you could flip what's in the black box, because they're the same. Which one do you think we should flip? The red circle. Yeah, because if you flip that, what happens? The square root goes to the top, so you don't fix it. Yep, and then you're done. If you decided to flip... The final answer, that's okay. You flip it, it goes to the bottom, but then you've got to fix it again. All right. Any question on finding the six trig functions given a point? No. Nope. Okay. Now, this one, um, they've given us an angle. Well, ultimately, we need to find what? The coordinate. We need the coordinate, but let's make that easier to think about. How can we make negative 540 an easier angle to work with? Yeah. You find the coterminal angle, just add 360 twice. Yeah, so we're just going to add, take negative 540, add 360, that gets you to negative 180, and then add 360 again. So it's the same as 180 degrees. Okay, now that's an angle that you should be able to kind of visualize where it would be on the circle. Where is the location of 180 degrees? Negative 1, 0. Yep. Now we can do the same thing we did before. It's actually easier because we don't have to deal with any roots. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's start with the sine. Okay, what's that? Zero. Zero. And the cosine? Negative one. One. And the tangent. It's undefined. Uh, another x goes to the bottom, so it's just zero. It's zero. Yes. So yeah, it's zero divided by negative one, so that's okay. Zero. Um, now, what about the cosecant? It's undefined. That's undefined. Oh, yeah. And the secant? Negative one. That stays the same. And the cotangent? Undefined. Undefined. Yep. Okay. Any uh, questions on that? No. Nope. All right.